You got 103 people just sitting in silence <laughs> waiting hey, for you. That's awesome. <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, we're here for some chit chat. It's Greg and I, and we are talking hey. about sketchy online retailers because I yeah. got this. Well, first off, Greg's got this cool art behind him. You can't see it because you don't see his face here. Um, so you'll have to go to Greg's stream to find it one day. Uh, but I was trying to share with him this sketchy art that I found on the internet, and we can't open it again. Like, the website either doesn't exist or they're not linking us back to it, but it's this cool Godzilla artwork, and we're trying to freaking find it. Where yeah. gear launch? Okay, the, the artwork was called Monsters Starry Night, like... um. Like a Van Gogh Starry Night, Night. so S T A R R Y, and it's got Godzilla in like a Starry Night style thing, destroying a city with attack helicopters nearby. All right, well, Gear Launch says no products found. Yeah, well, (laughs) I think that I honestly think that wherever you bought this, used Gear Launch to print it. That could be Because this is a customizable apparel. Oh, if you go to their apparel tab, the first thing you see are customized panties with toast on them. So, you know, this is a quality. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm serious. Oh I went God, to you're products right. apparel, and it's, it's just, just a piece like, of toast. Boom. It's like, boom, <laughs> panties with toast. <laughs> like, it's Why the would... first thing you see. Wait, who wants underwear with toast on it? I don't know. <laughs> It's got like a little smile. It's like, hi, I'm toast. <laughs> oh, please tell me it's disguised toast. I want this to be disguised toast on a woman's Oh my thong. God. It could okay, be. After, after zooming in on the thong, that is not disguised <laughs> toast logo. <laughs> that would have made me laugh so hard if it was though. Oh. Uh... Okay, the-rockingart.com is the website okay. name that the email links are directing me to. The-rockingart. But, but it's just spinning forever. I think I think the sketchy website got <laughs> shut down. <laughs> I told you, this place was really fucking sketchy. I got bad vibes from it. They didn't send me any receipts. I sent them an email being like, yo, where's my order? Where's my receipts, bro? And it was just a ghost town until my package showed up on the doorway. Um, and so I typed in the rock the hyphen rocking art.com and it says this domain was recently registered at Namecheap. Please check back later. <laughs> <laughs> I think you like 100% have stolen artwork on your wall in a sick poster. <laughs> nice. Okay, in chat, Inxanity has linked a different Godzilla Starry Night poster, which is not oh, the one that oh. I got, but is also well, I wanna see it. really cool. Oh, that is very cool. Oh man. Okay. That's even better than I like expected it to be, to be honest. I can I'll just send you a screenshot of what I got. But it's okay. tiny and it's small. That's what I got. Oh, it's very similar. This is cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. damn. Yeah. Right? I like and you've got like the attack, the helicopters in the background, and that's yeah. San Francisco with the um the Transamerica building burning down. Oh, that know? is the Transamerica building. I yeah. Th- I'm assuming so, yeah. It looks so, like it. <laughs> right? Right, so that's that's the one that I got, and that's cool as hell. Right, I, that's why you know it's like three in the morning, and you're like browsing the internet. And you really got to go to bed, but like you come across this random thing on some meme website, and you're like, "That's so cool. Can I get that? Can I get that as a poster?" And then you spend like forty five minutes, maybe maybe an hour and a half, at three in the morning looking for this poster, and eventually you find this sketchy website, and you're sure that they just like found your search history and like are giving you and the the resolution solution is bad like if you look at the picture if you like hold bring down the canvas paper you're like someone blew up a small image to paint on this canvas i don't paint it canvas doesn't have pixels but like come on now Um, incredible mm -hmm. oh hey sean how you doing yo what's up sean we're hot we're super hot (laughs) and we're also ready for that (laughs) <laughs> yes, yes, that, that too. We are we're talking Godzilla um, artwork. I got the the first link. This is a similar second one that someone posted, which I dig, but I don't know if I, I dig enough to buy. I dig Insanities, but I like yours. Mm-hmm. I like yours better. I think that one's thank cool you. as hell. Yeah, thank you. Thank yeah, I like the color palette on the first one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To be honest, though, I mean, I would put both of those on my wall, stolen or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> oh man. How's it going with you, Sean? What's what's how the happy hat? Uh, not much. I uh, I work. I uh, play games. I read some stuff. Go to bed. Just kind of in the loop at this point, I guess. I like it. Mm -hmm. It's very mm -hmm. a good routine. I need a good routine. My routines are all messed up at the moment. Although I kind of asked for that when I was like, hey, I'm going to run a West March where you can sign up for like any day of the week. And, you know, <laughs> quite a few selection of times. <laughs> yeah, I saw you streaming it last night and I was yeah. like, man, it's, it's going pretty late. <laughs> <laughs> it did. Yeah, <laughs> I have a hard cut off on weeknights at like midnight. And we this is one of the first times we've run up into it. Like mid combat, I was like, OK. It is midnight. We are cutting off. <laughs> Let's wrap this bad boy. I felt bad because they were close to the end of a pretty sweet, um, like battle with like some good loot. But mm -hmm. I, after six hours and it being midnight, I was like, mm, we're uh, we're still multiple rounds away from this finishing. I gotta, I gotta get out of here. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, have you been playing anything interesting in your video gaming? Uh, not really. I did. I did make a mistake last night and stay up until three playing Chivalry with a friend. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. I like it. I like it. Yeah, I, I also stayed up till three, but I only <laughs> stayed up till midnight playing games. <laughs> it is a. Uh... It is a, a deadline around the work for me, so I have to oh, uh, yeah, uh, do so some do some work every now and then on the weekends. I don't have like tons and tons to do. I only have one box of tax returns sitting on my table, um, so those those should be okay. Can I bitch about accounts for a moment here, Greg? Yeah, about by your, all means. About your colleagues, because yeah. We recently we recently moved from me doing all the tax work to going to a professional because my wife has her own business and I'm so we got like you know let's let someone else take care of it. Last year's was just a fucking mess. They didn't have anything right. They we had to like keep doing rounds of paperwork, being like, no, 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 all of our income, please, please, all of our income. This year, these bastards. I mean, okay, they're not that bad, but it's just like right around the initial scheduling. Like, well, here's what we expect. Pay this amount. We'll send you some paperwork in just a little bit with the final totals, and then you don't hear anything from them for like six months and then right around October, they're like, oh my God, we need you to sign this paperwork right now. Why didn't you send this to us six months ago? And we're like, oh my God, we've been waiting for you. And that's my that's my bitching about accountants. I it was very entertaining, I know. Would love to say that that is a um, unfortunate and unique experience. Uh, <laughs> however, um, it is it is sadly not. Uh, yeah. I think that accounting is going to normalize itself again somewhat soon, but you're running into like three problems. Um, the first is uh, the pandemic still hasn't really been resolved in accounting offices. Mm. Um, there's still a lot of like pending work from prior years, and they're also like still kind of short staffed like most of them. Um, and then you're also running into um, a like the IRS itself is like way behind. <laughs> and so they spend Didn't... a ton of time dealing with the idea that when they need something, when they're like, when they need a, um, a sit down call or they need something approved or they're trying to um, abate a penalty or interest, like mm -hmm. it takes so long and so much effort to sit through it. And so when you're a relatively simple return, super simple, yeah, it tends to, oh, Just I get, can like, do that whenever. To the end, I to can the do end, that, shove. yeah, all right. Mm -hmm. Okay, this mm -hmm. is a thing, I'll make this happen. Mm -hmm. And and I don't think that's a unique situation to a no. single firm. I think that's a lot of firms because there's so much time and effort being uh, put into the like very complicated stuff. And I know, that's but then I didn't end up paying my estimated taxes all year because I was waiting for my final totals for my original tax return before I started paying. I just forgot to pay my estimated, and so now we're like nine months behind on paying. It's just I hear you. Uh, and that's frustrating, and it sucks. 
and I'm sorry. And it's okay. It's not your fault. I know. This, I'm this sure that there are clients trying. of mine that would have the same thing to say about me, right? Um, <laughs> but didn't yeah. we get 87 million new IRS agents? Not yet. Uh, oh, we've just got we've just got the money for them. Um, oh, hopefully. Time. Yeah, 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 like the okay. the the money I think is just passed very recently, uh, or it's still in the it's still in Congress. Uh, the Got last it. the That's last I heard about it, it was funding. Yeah, Got the it. last I heard about it, it was still in Congress, but I haven't um, I haven't double checked on that because I've been kind of buried mm -hmm. in my own stuff for a little while. Well, your mid thirties is when you become pro more uh, pro larger IRS apparently because <laughs> I want more. Yeah, my dad was tell talking to me about that, and he was like, "They're gonna hire all these auditors and this and that, and they're gonna take all our money." I'm like, "Dad, <laughs> we need that <laughs> so badly." They're not gonna take there's, your money, Dad. They're gonna take no Elon's universe, money. <laughs> <laughs> there's no universe in which the the like hiring of these people is going to go badly for us. Like the yeah. IRS is so fucked right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. I, anyway, sorry. There, there's. <laughs> it yeah. sucks. No, it's my. I shouldn't derail the conversations with you know rants about the government and money. And I taxes. will give you one piece of advice. Um, if you are a payer of estimated taxes no. and you're on extension, pay the estimated taxes you paid last year. Well, that's what I'm gonna do next time because this was yeah. this did not go well. This yeah. is bad. Just when April, June, September comes around, just pay what you paid last year. The the worst thing that could happen is they say, oh, I think you need a little more. And then your December is like a higher amount, but you've already paid it. Right. 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 You don't get any, and of, any of those. Uh, I guess the second penalties. worst thing that could happen is like they go, oh, you don't need that much. And now you're going to have to wait for your money to come back to you in like April or October. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. All right, okay. now that we've got the financial hour out of the way, because this is where you come to for financial advice. Yeah, of course. absolutely. Oh, no, 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 no. This is not financial advice. <laughs> do not, it is do not 100% throw that percent financial advice offered by real. Um, we've got an accountant and a secret lawyer over here, and they're telling you how to. No, it's just not financial advice. Don't sue us. We don't have any money. That's true. If you sued me, you wouldn't get anything. <laughs> I think you repossess that Coca-Cola logo. Oh my god, no, oh. how dare they? Oh. No, All no, like no. $4.99 of this plate, this plate. <laughs> well, you, you really can't give up that splinter artwork is the real I thing. I know, it's, it's, it's just, pretty cool. It's yeah. perfect. Yeah. Um. <laughs> it's so derailed. Oh, I was going to ask Sean the same thing I asked Neil before the stream, <laughs> and now like Twitch chat can hear about it. Um, have you ever heard of a game called Gloomhaven? Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's the Warhammer one, right? No, maybe I doubt it. I don't think it's Gloom. I don't think it's Warhammer related. Let me take a look. It's the it's the strategy game, right? Like the kind of RP slightly RPG-ish, but mostly just strategy. I think it's Warhammer Fantasy. Is it Warhammer Fantasy? I don't think Gloomhaven is Warhammer Fantasy. I think it's I, its own. I, I universe. could be making that up. I thought it was Warhammer Fantasy. Yeah, I'm just gonna Google is Gloomhaven Warhammer. <laughs> I don't know. Like, maybe that'll work. Maybe. Uh, uh, our Gloomhaven. Here's the deal. Whether or not it's it's Warhammer. <laughs> no, there's an item right. in Gloomhaven called Warhammer. But... <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's, it's... it's like a board game. Like yes. it's a physical board game with like characters that run through dungeons and pick up gold and fight like weird enemies. Yeah. And then you get that gold to get more cards and more like items to go through bigger, stronger dungeons. So it sounds like you've kind of you've kind of heard of it. It's on a um it's on a like digital platform now where they automize mm -hmm. a lot of stuff. And even with that automization, it's still like the most complex game. Like I, it looks simple on its face, but I keep screwing shit up over and over and over again. Anyway, I've been playing it with uh, Apollo Nick and his crew. I started picking right. that up because it, it was free on uh, rum, on a uh, uh, stream, or uh, not Steam. My God, my brain has fallen out entirely. Epic, Epic Game Store. Holy shit! Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm paid to do taxes, gentlemen. Um, <laughs> And uh, it's 
I, I think it speaks to something you might enjoy because it is the longest, grindiest experience ever. You just slowly lose cards and lose cards. You're like, oh my God, I think we might've just wasted an hour. And then you win with like one card left and you're like, holy shit, this is the greatest moment of my life. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can like recommend it to anyone other than you. I feel like <laughs> you might enjoy it, but I don't know if I could give a positive recommendation to anyone else, but I am loving it. I think this is amazing. <laughs> yeah, I think I've had a wish listed for forever i just i have so many fucking games on the back wall. yeah <laughs> i uh i bought a mister a while ago it's a um yeah it's a like an fpga based like emulation uh platform uh -huh. essentially so i've got uh, like all all of the games up through like the playstation one to go through now um mm -hmm. and then i got a steam deck so i also i also have that to deal with now have you I, been enjoying the steam deck like how is that I, going I really like it, actually. It's, uh, -huh. uh, it, okay, first off, like, I, I was told it's really big, but, like, there's a difference between hearing it and holding it in your hands and going, holy shit, this thing is huge. <laughs> they made this thing, they made this thing enormous. I, I actually do worry that for some people it wouldn't be comfortable to hold it for a long period of time. Mm. Um, but it's been fine for me. Uh, okay. And then, yeah, it's it's a fairly high quality build, and it yeah. it, it it is exactly what I wanted it to be, which is the, the way to play games portably easily. That's awesome. And it, it, it it's really easy to get all the emulation software set up in that. They they made that as easy uh, as they possibly could. Nice. That's been, that's been very nice. I love being able to to emulate old games. Yeah, mm -hmm. they this, Valve's official promo stuff for uh, for the Steam Deck shows it running a Switch emulator. <laughs> 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 oh boy oh that's some wow that's some uh pettiness that i am here for <laughs> corporate pettiness baby <laughs> yeah I, wow. I guess i'm a valve fanboy now is my okay. is my my reality speaking of a switch do have you played with one of those like can you compare i have never used a switch portable um not a i'm not i'm not really a not really a switch fan i i haven't really been into nintendo stuff since like the gamecube okay okay fair enough Which, i mean everybody hated the gamecube but they're all wrong it's the, it's the best <laughs> platform ever that's what got us crystal chronicles so step off i will say i enjoyed playing crystal chronicles with you that was really cool so, um yeah you know, I I hold the opinion that the GameCube kind of sucked. That is an opinion I've held for a long time. <laughs> there are nothing but like bangers on that game though, or on that system though, right? Yeah. Like like there are like legitimate classics up and down that lineup. And like the controller is kind of dog shit, but it is easily yes. the most comfortable controller <laughs> I've ever held in my life. How can it be dog shit and the most comfortable? Like if it like, was, it's not good. It's not. It's not a particularly great controller. You're not like like uh -huh. I would never hook up the GameCube. Uh, I would. I would never find a way to hook it up to like my PC and go like, this is my new main controller. It's not. It's not good for that, right? It's gotcha. not an accurate controller. But you still like it anyway. It, it it's comfortable in the hands. If I played with it for a long time, I would not be like, oh god, I gotta take a break from it. Am I a freak that believes that the the Super Nintendo's like or no, was it the Super No, it was the N sixty four with the the like wing grip and the middle thumbstick? That's uh -huh. the that's the N sixty four, right? Yes. The, Am the, I a freak the... for thinking that that is like the most comfortable controller because i love that controller I, I i think you might you're not alone in that opinion but yeah you're definitely on the fringe of society with that <laughs> you're just two standard deviations away from the popular opinion <laughs> <laughs> only two okay <laughs> yeah but that's got that I weird that like controller. centerpiece that yeah, comes out that's gonna piece. stab you yeah. that what are you supposed to like hold that and like use the joystick on it like it's, and then they do the other hand on the, on the left side, so like the right I did side the is big just a low. Wing, I did the big wing. I would grip with my like lower fingers on the edges, and then uh -huh. if I needed the middle, I just had my thumbs on it. Yeah, I so played what's like the this. point of the middle handle then? <laughs> I don't know. It's just there to screw with you. I think, I, yeah, <laughs> aesthetics. Um, I, I don't, I, I, I can see where you're coming from with it being comfortable. Like it's not an uncomfortable controller to hold. It's just a bad controller from a usability perspective. Maybe, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I just, that's, that was the controller that always felt best in my hands, mm -hmm. right? Um, the controller I hated the most was PS3 for whatever reason. That felt like fair. the absolute worst controller in the world. I just couldn't hold it. 
I, I I think there might have been like huge build quality variations between the PS3 controllers because I, oh, yeah. I had a couple of them and one of them was like the best controller ever and one of them was just it got awful like horrific mm. terrible controller. Um, but I will say, I, I think uh, Sony has killed it with controllers from the PS4 onwards. Like the DualShock 4 and the DualSense are. are I really want to get my hands on a PS5 just to like try the controller. You can you can use it on PC, so you can you can pick. Oh, one I those, should but. just buy the PS5 and hook it up to my Steam. Oh no, I meant you can uh, you can hook up the the controller. Uh, um, the controller. That's what I meant to say. Yeah, buy the PS the PS5 controller. Yep, I I did that back when the PS5 was still un unpurchasable. <laughs> you could not find it anywhere. But you could find plenty of PS5 controllers. So I, I love I, your I D-pad joking. takes in the chat, Neil. That is um, oh yeah. Well, D-pads fantastic. are fucking awesome. I never learned how to use joysticks, and I, hate them. <laughs> I can't do it. My my only issue with D-pads is uh, they they hurt my thumbs after a while. Yes, 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 yes. they do. But that's a good thing because then you know, oh shit, it's been like six <laughs> I should, hours. I should, I should put this down. <laughs> I love D-pads. The one issue I have with them is in like more modern games, doing the like in between hard up down left right movement is like awkward with a D-pad. Mm. Like yes, you can do it. You can like roll your thumb between the diagonal kind of edge, but yeah. it just isn't as nice and comfortable. The yeah. other reason I hate D-pads is when I play fighting games, they make my uh, fingers yeah. like bloody and raw because oh, I'm like... Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I know you're not a keyboard warrior, Greg, but I, I actually think you would have the easiest time learning fighting games on a keyboard. That was really? how I learned fighting games. And it's, okay. it is it is just a better control scheme. <laughs> Wait, how, how would you do like, you know, a, a half circle down on a keyboard? Uh, half circle. So half is that half circle forward? Let's let's say sure, it's like a half circle forward. Yeah. It'd be you hit A, then you hit S, release A, press D, release S. That's a half circle. You just roll your fingers over ASD. Essentially, it's it's really simple. Interesting. One of the reasons that I've never All been right. able to get really into fighting games is the um, uh, what 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 do we call it? the execution. Right, being yep. able to accurately and quickly perform all of a move set mm -hmm. um, has been a struggle for me with fighting games. Always has been, but I love yeah. the concept of fighting games because it's this like real time puzzle that you're solving against another person. Right, and yep. that like I watch, I watch a, a guy. Um, his his channel is called Shaper of Stories. He's a really um, He's really a like writer um, for I think the the Super Beard Bros, um, but he's a big fighting game community guy. And I watch his streams when he plays Street Fighter, and it's so interesting because a he's entertaining, but b he like thinks about the game like like I would think about like chess or like a strategy. But he's yeah. doing like all these like fireballs and jumps and shit, and like trying to catch people in frame traps. And I'm like. That part of the game is so interesting to me, and I wish that I could execute well enough to like engage in that side of it. it it'd be like a few hundred hours of of learn because the reason that you can play at that level is because you've you've memorized all of the execution to the point of muscle memory, and you don't think mm -hmm. about it anymore. And then uh -huh. you just kind of you just kind of go to town on the on the, the mind games. I, um, I wish I could. I just, I don't know. I haven't been able to get to that level with it. Even when I tried to put in, I tried to put in a ton of hours on Tekken Tag once. Because... Tekken is one of the hardest ones to get into. I, I, yeah. for, first off, my brain is too smooth for 3D fighters. I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> Agreed. Me too. Um, but also <laughs> Tekken is the game where your character's moveset is a list of like a hundred different moves. And most of them are like really simple inputs. They just straight up have like a hundred moves on a single character in Tekken. <laughs> like it's it's an incredibly broad skill set. It, it's yeah. it's it's a fighter that's really hard to learn one character, uh, let alone several. Mm -hmm. um, I I started on Street Fighter, and the thing that helped me with Street Fighter is somebody was like, "Don't don't even touch the special buttons on your on your thing. Just hit just hit your normals. Use your normal like your punches and your kicks. Uh, uh -huh. So you have six buttons that you use and like situational movement tools for using them, and then learn the game on that. And that helped a lot for me. Um, I don't know how well that applies to other fighting games, but generally, it's. It's it, it helps if you step away from like the more complicated execution that comes with fighters for a bit and just kind of focus on not breaking under pressure when you get rushed down. That's fair. Yeah. Um, 
I don't, yeah, and that's that's my take on fighters. I think they're so cool, and I love watching high level play, but I can't execute well enough to like get into them myself. Mm. That's that's where I'm at. Yeah, I kind of feel that way. It's just, it's just a ton of time. It's, yeah, it's just tons and tons of time. You play Neil. You play um, Dota, right? Um, and League. I play some Dota, but you're dragging out my secret shame in front of everyone, dude. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, never mind. Right. No, no, never no, plays well, Dota on, ever. On. There is no shame in playing Dota. <laughs> there is no shame. In I think I think the league players need to need to hide from the sunlight here, but but Dota, there is no shame. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for validating my my games. <laughs> well, I was I was just wondering if that was a, a similar experience, right? Like you get the execution down, and then you're like engaging in the game differently. Because uh, I really yeah. enjoyed our time with Heroes of Hammer, or not Heroes of Hammer Watch, uh, Heroes <laughs> of the Storm, <laughs> yeah. until it like shut down. But yeah. I haven't really been able to get into a League or a Dota because I feel like I just need to learn so much execution and stuff before I can really think about the game. Yeah, I feel yeah, similarly. Um, I think if you want to play those games, the way to play it is by randoming and playing every hero a bunch of times over the course of a long period. Yeah, that's, that's basically <laughs> what I did. Um, but I didn't take that route. I picked, oh, here's two characters that I think are cool, or mm -hmm. three characters I think are cool. I'm going to play these three characters exclusively and have yeah, no right. idea what anybody else does anytime. And <laughs> so right, I'm wandering around the main. Yeah, yeah, and Nature's Prophet. Um, which annoys people to no end, but I love it. Uh, and so it's just, <laughs> you're like, oh, hey, here's a person. Wow, I died. And you don't really know what the fuck is going on until the person that you're hanging out with is like, Neil, he does that all the time. He's done it for years. <laughs> what are you doing? You're like, okay, I should learn See, these abilities. I have to play other heroes, otherwise I get mad. Because I'll, I'll play against somebody who plays a hero that I've never seen before. I'll be like, this character is fucking bullshit. They are, they are broken and stupid. I can't believe Volvo let it go on this long. Uh -huh. uh, and then I'll, I'll I'll try playing them myself. And I'll be like, all right, no, I'm just bad at this game. That's fair. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think they do a really really good job with Dota, and it's just there's so many heroes that there's so much to learn, and there's mm -hmm. so much available crunch if you really want to get into it. Like, yeah, you know, which uh, which camps to farm? If you got your hand of Midas, which ones like you know who should you specifically target in lanes if you're trying to go for XP or gold maximization? Like. It's fucking intense and insane, and you know, watching the mini map and trying to snipe courier, it's just it's a mess. Yeah. The 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 secret tip though is you don't really have to be able to do all those things because the yes. 90 99 percent of people can't. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. D Dota is um, a lot more interesting than League in my opinion, just because there's such a drastic spectrum of skill um, in like various ways. League is very like Twitch and execute like Twitch reaction and execution centric gameplay uh -huh. it's it's about mm -hmm. like shooting skill shots and landing them and, and out skilling your opponent in a fight and i think there's a lot of like macro and micro elements in dota that give people a lot of room to express their ability to play the game um and it, it, it it's a very interesting one to look at and mo most people suck at most things in it because no, nobody's got the time game is hard thousand hours into dota yeah yeah, yeah. game is um, hard dude but but everybody kind of gets their their little bits that they're good at. And if you do want to play Greg, I would just recommend playing with a couple of people because it's a lot less miserable to play uh, yeah. in a group than it is to play solo. The people I've asked yeah. to like help me learn the game and play with me uh, have both declined. They've been like, <laughs> no, no, we we don't have uh, the the time or interest to teach you this game. <laughs> So uh, I'm, I'm at the loss. I think that those types of games that are like a combination of, like you said, kind of twitchy execution, a combination of execution and a combination of um, uh, like strategy and macro theory is so cool. Mm -hmm. But I'm so bad at the execution parts of these games that I really wish there was like a very slow version that was you light would, on execution. I think you'd do better with Dota than League then because yeah. Dota is a lot slower. And there's, there's like, an, yeah, I had the same problem with RTSs like Starcraft. I, I played Starcraft as a child and I would do things like type in power overwhelming and kill everything with a probe and be like, ha, 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 oh my God. Um, but as I got older and I started watching like Starcraft um, competitive players like play, like I, I watched in control a lot. Um, 
the, I was like, this is so interesting. I'd like to do this. And when I tried to get on the ladder and like play a little bit, I was like overwhelmed by the execution. Like I couldn't even like apply a strategy because I was too busy getting nuked out by like, uh, what are they? Reavers, Ravagers, Reapers? Reapers. The Reapers, yeah. Mm. Yeah, and, uh, that is. I just couldn't. I don't know. I like. I would love a like a slow RTS or a slow MOBA or something where I could like be bad at the execution for a long time. <laughs> Wait, when you I, say I, slow, can you can you um dig down on what you mean by slow? Like you've got time sure. to make your decisions, or I think so. I think I am a poor at executing things quickly and like accurately for whatever reason. I I think it's because I like had two games that I played growing up like well and they were sports games. I have like Madden in my fingers and I have nothing else in my fingers. So like I can can I I could play Madden. I could probably pick up Madden. I haven't played in years, but I could probably still play it at a fairly high level. Like I could go online and play and it wouldn't be bad. Uh-huh. But I am very bad at like certain types of video games that require quick uh, execution, like the mouse movements in in StarCraft or the the quick um, mm -hmm. keyboard presses mm -hmm. in like a mm -hmm. in like a MOBA or an MMO, like hitting those keys accurately and quickly to be like, I need my Q here now. Right. I need my right. E. I need my whatever. Like those right. Right. often get fat fingered, or I'm slow to get them. Right click on the one hero, but you click on the other one, and you miss yeah. the thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if it was, I, I, I say slow, but I guess forgiving. If the execution was forgiving enough that I could still like be successful, even though I'm not executing at like a ninety percent level or better, that'd be mm -hmm. great. Can I, I think... can I interest you in oh. XCOM two? <laughs> I do like XCOM. That's very turn-based. I'm into it. It is. Yeah. yeah, I picked up Long War again fairly recently, and it's very good. <laughs> it's super good. Are you like so? But that one's a a like strategy RPG, right? Like you're just playing against the computer, right? Yeah? right. It's a single player yeah. game. It's not multiplayer. Yeah. I mean, I like those. I I love strategy RPGs. Uh, there's a new one that Square Enix dropped recently that I'm excited to to check out. Is uh, it Dio Field? Yeah. Yeah, I, I hope I hope you like it. I have heard not great things about it. You've heard some bad things. That's unfortunate. It's not. I mean, it, it is Square Enix. I don't know if they remember how to make video games or not anymore. Yeah, it, it's frustrating because like they 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 announced all these games coming out this year, and everybody was actually pretty excited because it's like, holy shit, they're they're announcing all these all these cool looking games, and apparently like Dio Field, the new um uh the new Valkyrie profile game are just kind of like really half-assed is is what i'm oh uh, is it half-assed like, yeah they, they just kind of feels like they rush something out the door that's like indie quality at triple a price is the it the looks so for. interesting like it looks yeah, like it's, it's a kind of modernization of like the final fantasy tactics experience yeah i i was i was keeping an eye on it too because i had i had a very similar similar uh thought about it and i i eh, i'm gonna wait for it to go on sale <laughs> so yeah before I well, it was like it. it's not a full price game. It's like thirty nine bucks or something. Oh, okay, that's that's a lot. Yeah, better. I think yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. I think the Steam version is sixty. So <laughs> go go with wherever um, you're seeing. Um, I bought it on Steam. Hold on, let me. I should have my receipt for that somewhere. Huh. I'm almost certain I bought it. Um, like not all that long ago on Steam for like thirty nine bucks. Interesting. You know, there might be like a. I believe Square Enix does a bunch of like discount deals for various various uh, things. Uh, Dio Field Chronicle forty four ninety nine is what I paid for. It. Oh yeah, it was. It might have been like a pre order thing if you if okay. you bought it around release. Okay. Okay. But yeah, I uh, I mean you're probably pretty close. A lot of the people who who I've seen say bad things are like it's not a bad game. I just don't think I should have spent sixty dollars on this. Fair so enough. If you paid less, you're you're probably you're probably in yeah. Play. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, the one the one thing I hope they don't screw up is they're they're re-releasing Tactics Ogre uh, next oh, month. Oh. I, I would like to see them do well with that. It's gonna be on Steam, which is which is. Tactics Ogre is a, a cool ass game. Yeah, That's it's the SNES game, yeah. 
Uh, this this is I the think... Let Us Cling Together remake. So this is the okay. PS1 strategy RPG. This is the okay. predecessor to uh, Final Fantasy Tactics. This is so. This is the second ogre game. It's not the the first ogre game. Oh God, I don't know. the The ogre battle series is so. Kind of, they call it Ogre Battle Chapter Seven, but I don't know if that's the seventh <laughs> game or if it's. No, there's there's. I'm I'm almost certain there's only two ogre battles. There's the first ogre battle that is like an in line type of strategy. Yeah, you're thinking fighter. the SNES one. Yeah. And then there's a second one that's more like tactics. Yeah, that's let us cling together. They they also had yeah. others. They had later ones like Knight of Lotus was a. Oh, did they make more TV after game. that? I ogre thought there battle was only 64. those two. Person of Lordly Caliber. That's right. I didn't know there was a person of Lordly Caliber. I oh, yeah. think that you need an emote that is a like person of Lordly Caliber. That's <laughs> you, awesome. Oh, it's so the, the the writing in Tactics Ogre has always been just just peak. Like the uh, there is blood on my hands. How long until it lies on my heart? Is literally just a chapter <laughs> oh, title in that game. <laughs> what a baller chapter name. Yeah, dude. It's, it's great. Um, yeah, I don't. I, I'm wondering what they're gonna do with that because they already made a PSP remake of it that was really good. Uh, um, so I the problem I have with the PSP too. stuff is that you can't really play it anywhere anymore. Like if you had a PSP and you bought the PSP, then like you still have it. But like if you uh -huh. didn't or you've since like what I used to do that I've stopped doing recently. But like when I was in college, I would like buy a new system or buy a new game and I would sell back the old ones. Right. So I don't have my old systems really. And like you just can't get like you just can't get Persona 2 or right. like um, some of them are very purchasable still. I do actually have quite a few PSP games. Um, yeah, Twitch chat says emulator, which like fair I, I enough, was about right? to say the PPSS PP emulator is probably the best one I've ever used. Um, yeah. In terms of just single emulators, it might be the, the, the best Hey one. man, I'm all for emulation. I'm all for some ROMs. I'm just, you know, I'm just saying like, if you want to legally like support the game and purchase it, like it's almost impossible to do for a lot of these PSP things. Well, I'll I'll, I'll tell you this: you, you cannot legally support the developers at this point with PSP released games because none of that shit is in production anymore. So everything you're buying is second hand. That's fair. I mean, there's yeah, that's fair. Um, however, also, if you do I want think to go it's that like route, I I got Final Fantasy Tactics on PSP for like ten bucks. You can get a PSP off eBay right now for like thirty. But it's the all, PSP store is down. The, oh yeah, you got to get physical copies. That's, yeah, that's, uh, the, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I'm saying, right? Like you can't actually purchase the uh, the PSP like like software stuff, right? The yeah, store's down. yeah, there's that. And yeah, I mean, I I guess that bothers me a little. I like I like fucking around with with like hacking systems and stuff like that. So that's probably not not as big a deal for me. But yeah, if you want the convenience of an eShop, that 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 is a dead dream. Well, it, it's part of it is the, I bring up the eShop specifically because um, most people have not had the opportunity to play pers like the first couple of Persona games, right? In the West, you either started with three like me. No, I didn't start with three. I lied. You either start with three like a nerd because you <laughs> knew this shit beforehand or you started uh -huh. with four and you went backwards or you started right. with five and you went backwards. These are like, it's becoming this big, really popular series. Right. But the older games, the ones that started the series uh, are like not available. Like in the West, like you largely can't purchase them or play them legally. Yeah. Um, and that's true for not just Persona which uh, or Shin Megami Tensei, which is a series that I like a lot. Um, but like that's true for a lot of like kind of smaller, uh, not huge mega buster um, IPs uh, yeah. that were only really available on these shops. Yeah, I think like outside of like I know Square Enix occasionally does like limited print runs of some of their PS1 stuff. Like they uh -huh. they had some of the old Final Fantasy games. That they still do some basic print runs for. Um, but yeah, mo most of the old stuff is just out of print. So you buy it secondhand or you you, you download it for emulation. I guess the, the problem with secondhand on some of the franchises that I'm a big fan of are uh, they they run you 250 plus dollars. <laughs> it's a little harder to justify that purchase over 60 bucks. <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of why I why yeah. I really, yeah. and again, 
If you buy something secondhand, you're not you're not supporting the devs. You're giving money to some jackass in uh, I don't know Tennessee who's been sitting on a big stack <laughs> of old games because he knew they were gonna be worth something someday. Now he's flipping them for a profit. And honestly, fuck that guy. He, he's he, got to he, put he, his he, kids through college, man. He's just got to sell his his childhood I, games. I don't think he was thinking hard enough if, that, if that's his approach. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to scalp real hard if that's, if that's how he's doing it. Yeah. Oh, God, the Beanie Baby collection. Oh, oh no. dude. We were just talking about that a couple days ago. What a fad. What a, a ridiculous collectibles scam. Yeah, I... Uh... <laughs> It was my favorite somebody... thing to do in the world to call uh, NFT people Beanie Baby collectors. Yeah, no, oh, I saw I saw that too. The good. like all the NFT people don't understand. I've been through this before and posted a picture <laughs> of their Beanie Baby collection. <laughs> I remember there's some photo going around of like a, pa a couple getting divorced in front of a judge, sorting their Beanie Babies to see like you know to fairly divide them, but they had to like you know the divorce was so bad they had to divide their beanie baby collection in front of a judge to make it fair and it was just like dudes <laughs> your divorce is so that. expensive i remember the fucking beanie baby divorce oh god. god we covered that in college like that was in one of our like liberal arts classes we spent a day on that oh here it is oh See, the, the worst part about that is family court is maybe the most depressing court system that you can go through. Like, everybody is sad yeah. who, who works inside a family court because it's just, it's soul destroying. Like, you've got people who are basically uprooting their entire lives going through these fights. Mm -hmm. uh, so, <laughs> throwing in, I'm doing all this over a Beanie Baby collection just has to be an extra layer of, of misery on top of it all. Yeah. Yeah. So are they worth anything these days? Did anyone ever want to buy uh, someone else's a, Beanie Baby? That's is a good question. Is there what a market? These, uh, I once, once a collect, so the weird thing about collectibles is their price will come down, but they never go to zero very often. Like once a collectible has a value, it will generally have like some value. Like even I, even the shitty NFTs are still like four ninety nine level valuable. I Here's think the thing though, I'm looking at the a, a collectible is only as valuable as what people are willing to spend to have it. Yeah. Um, and I'm looking at Beanie Baby listings on eBay, and they all have zero bids. Like there's a bunch <laughs> of listings on here for like more than a thousand dollars, but nobody. Oh them. yo. This Beanie Baby here that they're trying to sell for 50 grand, I legit had at one point. Wait, wait, link me the 50 grand Beanie Baby. Okay. Where is, are you guys just on eBay here? Yeah, I mean, it's like the first thing I saw on, on eBay, but here I'll, oh, is this on Etsy? What the fuck? Wow. I thought this was on eBay. Never mind. I don't I don't trust any Etsy bullshit. What the, well, what the here's hell? Here's a nine hundred thousand dollar princess the Diana Bear from nineteen ninety seven. <laughs> rare and retired in mint. Beanie baby buyers operate on the black market. That might actually be true. What? I could see it as just a front for money. <laughs> like oh, I mean, yeah, I mean that's fair. They, they, the Beanie Babies were just Web 3 before Web 3, right? You just yeah, shoved just... them full of, of nickels and, you know, sold them for a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. It's just a fucking purple bear. Who thinks they're going to get $900,000 <laughs> for this? Yeah, this is, there's there's 1,200 watchers. I uh, <laughs> imagine 1,200 people pointing and laughing is, is my guess. Yeah. Hey, and the next most expensive one is the same type. <laughs> Princess Diana retired Beanie Bear. Maybe it's so expensive $44. because the I love just I love the prices here. We have like a nine hundred thousand dollar Beanie Baby, and then the like sponsored items that were actually bought: seventeen <laughs> bucks, thirty five bucks. God damn this is kind of what I'm thinking. So you, if you go down on that link uh -huh. to the items customers also bought, uh huh. There's the same bear, like very rare Princess Diana bear, blah, blah, blah. It's the uh -huh. same exact thing. It's selling for $35. <laughs> and I think yeah. that's likely. 
I bet yeah. that is bought and shipped. This is what I mean about collectibles having some value. This Beanie Baby is really worth like a penny in manufacturing, but like it yeah, might it'll sell, probably sell for like it'll probably bucks. sell for 35, 40 bucks. Yeah, and, in, in and sentimental value, I can see sentimental that. value or just random collectible <laughs> weirdos. Well, yep. here's one selling for eight dollars after six bids. Um, started at four ninety nine, made its way up to eight. Same bear, same purple Princess Diana bear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe that. Yeah, you know, I don't know anything about Beanie Babies, but I'm just gonna pretend like I know everything and say that it failed as a collectible because they produced too many too quickly and didn't give people enough room to, um like a uh, enough scarcity to the market because it was just a hundred thousand different beanie babies overnight practically mm. that's my hot takes on why beanie babies failed it or people realize that they had a bunch of stuffed animals in their house and like most of them weren't into that i know like you got to attach it to something like star wars action figures now you've got like a marketing collectible based off of like a childhood emotion that you can exploit but beanie babies like there was no co-exploitation with it it was ah, just there was no ip to be exploited I right see. it was just this like here's a thing value this thing you Here had you to be you had to be into specifically beanie babies not like Mm -hmm. like movies or comics or mm -hmm. like uh, something else mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah that's my although to be fair like barbie collecting was and still is a thing and like i don't think that ever had a different ip it, that's always just been a hasbro toy right yeah but it didn't start as a collectible right it started as a toy for your kids and then like yeah. 40 years later people are like oh my god do you remember the <laughs> the gay ken nightclub barbie doll that sold that one time it was amazing there's before. no way they ever made a gay ken had <laughs> doll I would, they like, accidentally I hope that they did. made one. They like tried to find what was cool in men's fashion and made one that was just like you know he's wearing. Um, okay. Uh, okay. They made a fashionable Ken like doll. Fish, and people, yeah, he's got like fishnets and, and he kind of looks like a raver. They did not put him in fishnets. Although I, I think I so. wish they did. It would be fantastic if they did. I hope they made a gay Ken doll. They um, did. They absolutely did. Yeah, and doll there's a story nuts. about this, and I, I'm gonna relate it, and I might be completely wrong, but I think it's like you know the highest selling single Barbie doll of all time because I love it. it was a, a weird Ken Is doll. Is it the metallic gold fishnet? I'm nice. glad that that exists. I'm glad that that exists. That I, I had less faith in Hasbro as a company than that. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't put faith in Hasbro. You you know this one got through through a mixture of like incompetence and higher ups and uh, ingeniousness in in its in its lower. Yeah, whoever okay. designed it to sold that shit like Here crazy. We go. Like yeah. there's it some is. there's some designer out there that needs like a he, gold star. <laughs> he tells that story every time yeah. he goes to a party. It's I called... fucking got it through production. <laughs> it's the earring magic Ken doll released by Mattel in 1993. Um, as the companion to its eerie magic bar figure, uh, only six dolls, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Mattel had conducted a survey of girls asking if Ken should be retained as Barbie's boyfriend or whether a new doll should be introduced. Surveys indicated that girls wanted Ken, but for him to look cooler, the redesigning of Ken was the result. Observers quickly noted the resemblance of earring magic Ken to a stereotypical gay man from pastel color clothes to the earring necklace, which was described as a chrome croc, a, a chrome cock ring. Um, ah! Kisich minded gay men bought the doll in record numbers, making Earring Magic Ken the best selling Ken <laughs> model in Mattel's history. It. I'm so glad. Oh, that's a Mattel product. I'm sorry. I've been calling them Hasbro this whole time. Yeah. Fuck it. They're a corporation. I don't care. Um, mm -hmm. That's it, wonderful. The story weird. makes Every me time so I happy. I see a story like this. It's like this moment of like, are, are, are gay consumers just like whales in the market or something? Because every time I see a story like this, it's it's sold record numbers. Mm -hmm. like it, it's about, it made I think it's about representation, dollars. right? It's like, oh my God, there's actually a thing like me for the first time, I can like see maybe that, yeah. ever, right? For 90s and it's mainstream, right? It's, it's not only like, oh, it, this there's this cool thing. It's like, no, there's the biggest property of the like early 90s has like us that's us right and, they and it's before it. anything was you know bef before these things were more acceptable right this is the yeah. you know, 93 was not let's call it a you know a very open time 
Um, so sold out, yep. completely sold out by Christmas, largely due to gay men buying the doll in droves. Despite also, the commercial we... success of the doll, I'm going to just finish the sentence though. Right, a public yeah, yeah. expose on the secret meaning of the circular charm as a gay sex toy from the gay community commentator Dan Savage in Seattle, Washington. Alternative Weekly newspaper, The Strangler, The Stranger, <laughs> Mattel, the, strangler. <laughs> the Stranger, The Stranger, The Stranger, led Mattel to discontinue Eerie <laughs> Magic head Neil, and I think you need to make your competing. Stores. You need to make your competing. Uh, your competing outlet now, the Strangler. Oh yeah. my God! Yes, let's let's start a news network and we'll call it the Strangler. <laughs> That's our newsletter, the Strangler. Yeah. So we'll have our opinion column called the Slasher. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it was really popular, and then once Mattel realized that like it might be gay, they recalled it from their stores immediately, and it's ah, still the most the corporation. The I know. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's still the most successful doll sold, the Ken doll I sold, it. despite being pulled from the stores in less than a year. I don't know I how we it. got on. Incredible. Oh, collectibles, right? That's how we got here. Yeah. Okay, before we also, leave this topic entirely, I, I, might, we... I might be looking at the same thing as you, Greg. Uh, I, I I don't know. I just I just want to point out that like okay. the 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 purpose of this Ken doll was to make him more cool, yeah. right? We wanted him to be more cool. <laughs> this is what cishet like pastel <laughs> men, purple Ken. In, like middle aged men in the nineties were like, this is cool. <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> this is the pinnacle of awesome. <laughs> to be fair, have you seen nineties fashion? Oh, maybe boy. this is a this maybe this is a statement on '90s fashion more than anything. But like, boy, what a decade! And, and I'll be honest, this this is actually pretty great. This is better than than most men's fashion that I. You know see. what? Ty Oblivion makes that. a good point. Gay people generally are cool, <laughs> <laughs> much more cooler than us. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. No, this there's is, a there's this a, is... a there's some facts being spoken here. <laughs> maybe maybe this was purposeful and like maybe there's just one dude out there in the in the Mattel universe. It's like I know what's up. All I'm what? saying is if I if I went to the grocery store right now and there was a guy there wearing this, he'd be the most impressively dressed person in the grocery store. Like this is, oh, this is, this is so out outfit. of date, but definitely impressive. <laughs> it would impressive is an operable word there. It's doing a lot of heavy lifting, I think. <laughs> well, he's got, like, the lavender leather coat with the lavender uh, fishnet shirt on and like the jeans. Oh, yeah. and, woo, that's not a grocery big store apparel. chain. <laughs> <laughs> He's Probably like flavor, flavoring it up like big. <laughs> He's got he, like the he, he got one made of tungsten just for the just for oh, the added. Oh, oh, dude, mm. don't get tungsten cock rings, bro. They got to get out the <laughs> diamond saw from the the the, the fire department <laughs> if they got to take that off. Oh my God, your your Twitch chat is a is a heretic, Neil. What what did they say? No, no, like the actual chat itself, like it only visible to me, and it's an invitation. It's like, come on, Greg, pray to the winner gods, and only three thousand <laughs> channel points. Pray to the winner gods, Greg. <laughs> it's a worthless thing. It does absolutely nothing. There's no such thing as the winner gods, but everyone does it all the time. <laughs> it tickles oh, me so much. Uh, oh, look at Chris. Somebody, look at somebody him. posted in chat a little ways up. I wanted to ask you: Did you hear about the Twitch foam pit scenario? I did. Happened? Yeah. No, I saw someone being like, "This is the most expensive piece of foam," and other people were like, "Oh my god, the Twitch foam pit!" But tell me the story. So Twitch had a foam pit at uh, TwitchCon that people were jumping into, just a bunch of foam blocks, basically, into a big pit that you were you were supposed to be able to like dive into. Awesome. Um, and somebody jumped in and broke their back because Twitch didn't properly build it. It was, yeah, it was not oh. a safe phone pit. Um, I would like to point out that I don't think that TwitchCon was the one that built it. Um, okay. It was a Lenovo um, booth at TwitchCon. I'm pretty sure Lenovo or the like people in charge of the okay. Lenovo booth. Okay, so somebody somebody it. else is ultimately responsible. Regardless, uh, somebody was asking for my opinion, and it's I, I hope whoever is responsible gets sued for a lot of money because that's really bad. Like they broke a. 
back yeah, like they are yeah. physically like they're yes, like yeah, seriously yeah, injured yeah. The streamer there's a video uh, of it and it is painful it, as shit you can it, see it, the, it was genuinely hard to watch yeah. she does I'm the thing where she like gets up she's like ow that hurt i'm fine and you can pinpoint the exact moment where she goes oh i'm not fine yeah yeah at first she's yeah. like oh that kind of hurt but i'm good and then she like tries to get up and sits back down and is like no no, oh. I can't. I can't do this, and it's it's yeah. real bad to watch. And she had, I think she already had surgery on it, and like it's a thing. Dude. The, here's, so are you? You may not know this YouTuber. Um, they're. I don't know if I would qualify them as small. They're like huge compared to like my like four vid ass, but um, they're uh, swell entertainment. Um, she does a lot of like I go to events and review them. Um, and, uh, she was talking about this incident and during her like kind of research of it, she said that after this injury, right after this person broke their back before TwitchCon had to come and like shut down the, like, uh, that particular foam, like, uh, the gladiator event, mm -hmm. they continued having people go through it. Right. So the broken back wasn't even the first injury they had, but it was the most significant one. And then after the broken back happened, like more, like there was like 30 minutes or more of people like continuing to do this. Right. It's yeah. like incredibly negligent. Oh, <laughs> dude. Yeah. It's a, it's a bad story. Um, Man, I've been to say for Bert. Oh my, this is this is just ridiculous. Faux yeah. bits that hurt you. My God. My oh. guess is it wasn't deep enough. Yeah, probably. Or uh, or yeah, the way know. that they had built it, because it was it was a bunch of foam blocks, right? It's possible that like the way they they because the, like normally with a ball pit, the balls will go pretty close together, right? But if you have big cubes, they might not. Uh, collide with each other in a particularly uh, cushioning way. So it's very possible she had an awkward landing on one of the blocks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, that's that's possible. I like if I remember correctly, the way that you make those is you like dig. You don't dig out, but like you create a raised platform. So there's like a mm -hmm. pit, right? At the right. bottom of the pit, you would put like a trampoline or like a specific type of mat or something yeah right? so that and then they not, didn't do that they just had a concrete floor yeah you can't have like a concrete floor or something hard under there you gotta have like some kind of softer like i think it's a trampoline that i saw and then you fill the rest of the pit with um with foam um and i don't i just am assuming that they didn't do that yeah mm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was a uh, that was a thing that happened. Uh, don't watch the video if you're if you're squeamish because it's it's. I mean, it's not gory or anything. It's just it's. You, yeah, you watch I don't want to watch a tough, video of someone a breaking their watch. back. That sounds awful. Yeah. No, yeah. The, the moment where she tries to get up and has the realization of like, oh no, I'm not okay, is like a tough watch if you've ever like been injured. Like it's yeah. a very empathetic like, oh god, no, yeah. moment. Yeah. I can't even watch like videos of people getting kicked in the balls, like doing, you know, falling on their bicycle. It's uh, ugh, someone would be breaking their back would be even worse. There's people who pay good money for, for videos of people getting kicked in the balls. Owl My Balls is a very popular show in the future. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I really, really, really have come to dislike that movie. Oh, there are parts of it that age fine, and there are parts of it that do not age well, and it is weird. Watch I'm gonna like really era. hot. I'm gonna really hot take you on idiocracy here. Bring it on. It's very fascistic. I, I'm, it I'm makes it it's a little, it's a little, it's a little, yeah. It, it makes a, a very a explicit <laughs> case for eugenics. Mm, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yes, yes, it does. That's actually the entire principle of it, right? Is that, yeah, I'm, I, it, I'm it, it is, that, it is a movie that I watched the first time and didn't like because i was like oh that humor is not for me uh -huh. and then i watched it again later as a younger adult and went oh you know this is kind of funny i can see the humor in this and my friends liked it and we had a good time and then as i have aged further into my like 32nd year of life i have realized that i really am uncomfortable by this movie like i really dislike it my my biggest issue with it is all of the people who talk about it uh, on the uh -huh. internet. 
will see like a single instance of a dumb thing happening and go like we're quickly becoming idiocracy and it drives me crazy every time i see yeah, it yeah yeah oh my god yep yep terrible future Somebody and, was trying to tell me that we were about to pull a Warhammer, and I had to be like, no, 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 no. We are so much closer to pulling a Cyberpunk than a Warhammer. Oh. And then it became like an actual debate, and I couldn't I, understand for the life of me, like, the other side of this argument. I think that might have been me, because I did I did make a joke when the Supreme Court ruled that uh, having compelling evidence that you were innocent was not enough to be to have your, your conviction for a crime reversed. Right. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I made a joke about it being very Warhammer because Warhammer is the the one that that coined the whole innocence proves nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. God. Anyway, sorry, I cut you off, Neil. I just I, that came to mind, and I don't I, even remember what I was going to say. I have a I have a bad habit of having diarrhea of the mind. It just like once it's there, it just starts spewing out. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Um, okay, so uh, that was the Ken dolls. That was the Beanie Babe. I'm trying to track back to where, to the last productive <laughs> conversation we had. Before that. Emulation, okay. Dota, right? Dota. Dota. Um, don't play it or do play it, but it's brutal. <laughs> it's again, play with a couple of people. If you yeah. got if you got some people to play with, it's a much easier time. Yeah. I don't know if you know this yet, Sean, but the Dota community is very toxic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I know. I, I don't disagree. I started on the original Dota, like Dota 1, like Dota All-Stars. Uh -huh, uh -huh. um, that, that was the real toxicity right there. <laughs> I hear. Dota, Dota 2 has nothing on, on the, old, the old Dota community. Easily oh. the worst group of people I've ever played with in my life. Man. Well, it's bad now, so I can't even imagine how bad it was before. Oh, but... I was told to kill myself in so many colorful ways back in Dota oh, All Stars. Yeah. I get that to this day. Truly Still. creative people. Wow, man. It's just a bunch of people who want to blame everybody else for their mistakes, and they'll sit there and they won't move, and they'll just be typing about how everybody's so bad in this game as they then just get mm -hmm. like killed mid lane. And you're like, my dude. It's not you, or it's not us, it's you, or just, I don't know. They drive me crazy. Mm -hmm. I have a hard time. Sometimes I just like mute all in order to play. Yeah. Yeah. That's the other reason that it helps to play with, uh, with friends. Uh, mm -hmm. is I, I've been playing with Faye and that's usually, it's usually a, a casual enough time. Yeah. Uh, that seems Faye. like a good time. And then, <laughs> and, and when, when you're playing with other people, it really helps when like somebody, uh, one of the randoms on your team just loses their mind. Uh, we had we had somebody just have a straight up breakdown and start start screaming racial epithets in the chat. Oh no! Uh, and that was when you have a group of people. It's it's much funnier when somebody just completely loses their cool yeah. and, and uh, absolutely explodes in the game. Uh -huh. I think I make Faye uncomfortable when I try to play League or Dota with her because <laughs> I'm like she she'll she has like knowledge right, and I'm uh -huh. like give me knowledge, Faye. Yell at me. Tell me what to do <laughs> and i don't think she likes that i think she's like no no this is bad <laughs> she's like, i don't want to babysit you greg you gotta do it on your own <laughs> oh yeah yeah all right the real path to victory in dota is to just pay for dota plus because that's literally buying power Aside from helping you pull camps, what does Dota Plus improve in your actual gameplay? Is, is there anything besides knowing the timers for pulling camps that you need? Oh, well, you only need to know that if you're going to play supports. So, yeah. so um, <laughs> I think I think the, the item recommendation is also a Dota Plus feature, isn't it? I don't know. There's a buying. The guides aren't Dota Plus. Is there? No, a... the guides aren't. But there's there's literally a Dota Plus guide um, for like, here's what we think you should build next for your items on whatever hero that you're playing. And it's it's quite good. It usually recommends what a guide was already doing. So clearly mm. it's it's working off of um, mm. it's working off of some kind of Oh kind of my god. Process. Speaking of these games, have you guys ever heard of Team Fight Manager? Yeah, I watched you play that a little bit. Oh, it's so fun. Like legitimately so fun. I played 
way too much of it on stream. <laughs> like, like I played like a month's worth of this game on stream just to win the world championships on it. Like it was crazy. It's an auto battler, but it revolves around a like fake MOBA, like team fight game. Right, like, and it has different champions with different skills. And it all, like the majority of the game is you doing like the ban and pick strategy for your little teammates. And then they auto battle and win or lose. And then you just keep that loop. Oh my God, it's so addicting. I And they have like randomized buffs and nerfs to all the different like classes as you like play through more and more of the game. It's nutters. What is this? Because yes. I played a couple of auto battlers. Yeah. But like the screenshots from this are like a fake, like yeah. live event it, with people yeah, behind. It's a, fake, live event. it's a fake live event where people do massive team fights and there's no like laning or nothing. It's just team fights. And you manage your little team trying to take them from the like amateur league to the world championship. And you can scout players, you can train players, you can fire them and pick up better ones. New champions get added all the time. Um, buffs and nerfs oh happen. God. It's so fun. It's like amazingly addicting. It gets a little simple after a while. There is like a, it starts really simple, but you know it's gonna be simple because it's starting with like two champs and then three champs and then like it'll it'll ramp up. And there's this sweet spot where you're like, oh my God, this is the funnest thing ever. Eventually, mm -hmm. as I like got to the point where I could actually win the world championship, I um, I had like solved the game. Like it was, it was just kind of too simple, but like the process of getting there was super fun. Mm -hmm. Do you guys remember Salty Bets? Because this reminds me in concept a lot like salty bets, where you're more doing the stage of things rather than the the actual battling. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's similar. I see where you're where you're coming. From. Yeah, I mean, the, I, clearly salty bets has no gameplay mechanics. You just bet, but right. Yeah. The, yeah. the 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 faux tournament reminded me strongly of salty bets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 similar to salty bets for sure. Yeah, yeah. In that way. Oh my god, salty bets is still active. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, they're still. That. What is this? <laughs> Why is Salty Bet still a thing? <laughs> this is like eight years, ten years ago that we were playing Salty Bets. I, some people never stopped. <laughs> They've got a real problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's Cell versus wonderful. Android 8. Oh my god. Okay, that's enough. I don't need that in my life anymore. <laughs> I've moved on. Um... Uh... Well, uh, now that we have a thoroughly exhausted video games <laughs> and <laughs> movies and Barbie dolls, uh, uh, should we maybe have some tabletop topics or are we just- I think we should, just because this is listed under Dungeons and Dragons. We shouldn't- <laughs> Awesome. Uh, well, uh, I've been playing a new game recently uh, that mm -hmm. I've I've enjoyed. Um, I know that Neil will probably tune this out, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's called Scum and Villainy. It's a it's a kind oh, of a hack almost right, of uh, Blades in the Dark, but for a, a sci-fi setting. It's supposed right. to be like a yeah. sad western, um, and I've actually been. Um, fairly enjoying it um, for a specific reason. I wanted to get your kind of take on um, how you how you feel about this. So in Blades in the Dark and similar systems, um, kind of like uh, Scum and Villainy, it treats time as like a flat plane a little bit. So like you're you don't spend time planning and prepping and like thinking out the details of your mission so much mm -hmm. as you like roll an engagement roll and then you get thrown into the action. And then like when something comes up, you go, oh, 
I want to flash back to when we planned for this scenario and oh I set up a bomb, right? And then you role play that and then you roll to see if the bomb is good. And then you come forward and then your your like effect happens, right? Like the bomb is there and it works or it doesn't or like a complication it's like arises. It's the D&D game? <laughs> yeah, kind of. It's very cool. And it does a neat thing where like um, instead of choosing your items, you choose like a load. You choose how many items items you can have and then as you're playing you just click a box as long as you have available boxes and now you have that item so you're like oh you know it'd be useful right now a crowbar check now i have a crowbar and i was smart enough to plan for it huh. i think that's a really cool way to have like your game like a free flowing and fairly narrative and not get bogged down in the like okay so what if we cast invisibility and then try to go through the back door no wait a minute what if we like flew in from the top of the tower like wait do you have that scroll of teleportation still right like mm -hmm, i kind of mm -hmm. like that idea and i was wondering if you had um, thoughts on it and if it, like implementing it into a more D D ish uh game would be possible or like interesting i have seen that used at a couple of points mm -hmm. in a couple of different games um five torches deep uses something kind of like that they have the quantum uh tool set system where like you've got a bag of supplies and you can pull a thing out of the bag of supplies uh -huh. and you you've got that and then it's got a certain number of uses essentially before you've emptied the bag uh -huh. um and i yeah no i i think it works really well for what it's trying to do um like that that is a very functional system that yeah it, it creates retcon the the tabletop experience where it's it's letting you make something that feels very cool and planned out without actually having to make something very cool and planned out um i've discovered i don't like that <laughs> in tabletop. Oh, you don't like it <laughs> um i i don't know i i've tried what is it um can you I've... like dig down into what you don't like about it like what is it that uh, doesn't feel good i have found out that I am very much just a trad tabletop gamer. Uh, and I like when things are just... Uh, trad? Uh, there, there's various cultures of play. Trad is traditional. Like, uh, uh, you're, 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 this would be going to like AD and D second edition. It, I laughed order. because I understood it. And yeah. like, <laughs> like it tells you the like rabbit holes that Sean and I have been down. <laughs> Like not together, but uh, ended up in the same place. <laughs> yeah, independently, the same holes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I I just kind of like when games are. I I kind of like when when rules in tabletop games are impersonal representations of just resolving things that happen in the setting. Um, and story games are often a lot more about uh, making a free flowing narrative. And I've I've increasingly discovered I, I just don't care. About I just, I don't really care. If the party wants to spend 45 minutes arguing about a particular approach uh, and eventually settles on, we'll just poison the cake and leave it on the wizard's front doorstep. That's perfectly fine. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll let that happen. I did, I did why ever does do no that one, Why does no one ever try that? That's a great idea. <laughs> I like it because there's still a resolution phase, right? Mm -hmm. when, you, when, you, when you pull an item out of a bag, you have the item. That's different. But when you do the flashback in this in this game you like like um we were we were uh chasing down a villain um a bounty hunter um who had a stolen piece of technology right in like a old uh, like hive scum city like seedy motel and we were doing like a blaster fights and we were like trying to get this guy and his robot is like racing away like down like the back halls or whatever and we called for a flashback right um and uh, our our rigor our like kind of mechanic said who had come into the like building a little bit later than us is like i flash back to the time i wasn't in the building and i set up this trap in the back door knowing that somebody might escape and so we flash back to that and then he has to like describe the trap and tell us how he's building it and then like we rolled to resolve like the efficacy of the trap Right. Mm -hmm. And so there was still like role playing done and there was still mechanics that supported the trap. Happening. To feel very smart and cunning, um, but he still had to like resolve that phase. Right. It wasn't just a yes, that happens.
Yeah, absolutely. And again, I think it's it's great at doing what it set out to do. Like, I, I, I absolutely get why people are into that kind of thing. I just like mm -hmm. getting lost in the weeds. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fair enough. Mm -hmm. How about you, Neil? Any thoughts on it? Well, it's a cool idea. I like the yeah. mechanic. Um, I guess I haven't played with it before, so I don't know. The, I don't have any um, like details on the execution mm -hmm. that you're talking about. Uh, I could see it being pretty exploitable, so I, you'd have to like find a uh, make it like a resource that can't be overused, right? Um, there is and then... a small kind of cost to it, yeah. So yeah. in the in the game, you take what's called stress, um, <laughs> and um, to flash back <laughs> like that, you you take two stress, right? And when your stress reaches a certain level, you like um, you take a harm or a trauma. Um, so there is a, there this is a, too real. Too real. <laughs> <laughs> there is a, like a, a soft cap kind of on doing that, um, activity. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a cool idea. And I think it would be a fun thing to implement. Like, you know, you could just port it to D and D by giving people a, you know, you have earned one, what'd you call them? Flashback. You have earned one flashback. Uh, uh -huh. for doing X, Y, Z. And I think it might be a cool thing that you could add to like a rogue character um, to beef out the rogue class, or if you you know limited it in that way, shape or form, that'd be a fun mm -hmm. way to do it. Um, mm -hmm. I do like the the notion of like, I did plan for this and I've got, you know, 18 int or whatever. So I would have thought that this could be an option. So here we go, uh -huh. bomb. Um, yeah. Cool idea. Got to find a way to make the, to, to let you know, um, the implementation would be key. You know, yeah, like it's super exploitable, but it sounds fun. I do like I the storytelling would... aspect. Sorry. Oh no, that's that's all good. I do I do think it would fit better in. Uh, I I feel like thematically that works really well as like a thief or a rogue kind of trait, like Neil mentioned. Uh -huh. I feel like that would work a lot better in older systems of Dungeons and Dragons, where there is a lot more uh, divert uh, division, I guess, between the classes and their roles. Like back in old D and D, when the fighter was the fighting man, and that mm -hmm. that was if you want to be the combatant, you play the fighter. Um, and then I feel like that could be a thing that would make thieves uh, a little bit. I, I feel like the thing that thieves are really good at in old school Dungeons and Dragons is a thing that people don't really do, even when they're playing older systems of Dungeons and Dragons. And I think that could be something that buffs up the thief a little bit and brings them a little more in line with what that was maybe intended to feel like to play. Mm -hmm. I do like that, right? Because there's a there's kind of a archetype of thief play that's like the mastermind, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Having mm -hmm. a resource like that would definitely feel um, like very cool, right? You could really play into being that mastermind if you specced into it, like maybe yeah. some specializations or or um, proficiencies put into it, get you some resources to flash back into the episode. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I, that could be really fun. Yeah, I think you could give people, um, you know, rogues a resource. Like, if you have at least 10 pounds of free encumbrance, then you can, you know, once per encounter, once per day, once per, I don't know, whatever, um, you can have one item that you brought ahead of time, and that item is, like, is fungible the right word? No, um... Uh, flexible flexible is the Long right time. word mm -hmm. yeah so just like you know yeah, you, yeah. you've got like a felix's magic bag and you can pull out mm -hmm. one thing if you've got enough blah 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 and then you can perform one i would have set this up ahead of time action and you can perform one mm -hmm. and you could like gain those as you level and that could be kind of fun um that does sound cool mm -hmm. It'd be a cool way of of enhancing the rogues and then it would they would want to have like uh You'd want to travel lights so that way you could have more of these things or pull out heavier things at will which would be kind of cool makes thieves more into like a bag of tricks than this awkward thing that they are right now in second edition i should say right now but you know for the last 40 years um yeah i think that's really cool and i the other thing i like about it is you're giving them a like a unique resource mm -hmm. i i'm really into giving resources to players um that are like 
on their character sheet and they can say, yes, I do this, but mm -hmm. are like kind of non-standard. Mm -hmm. I've been doing that mm -hmm. a lot with like charges on magic items, but mm -hmm. I really like the idea of tying it to a class like that. I think that's cool. Um, I gave a, a wizard a magic item in, a, in the West Marches game that I do, uh, a lens uh, that holds charges as you kill monsters. And so like uh, you could charge it up to a certain point and then expend them all at once to regain some like spell slots. It was like a mana storing lens. Mm -hmm. I think having a unique um, like resources at your disposal for like your kind of class power is a, is a neat trick to have a, a class identity, but still be able to feel very effective in like your skills and combat and stuff that people generally want to have, right? Uh, I think a lot of people don't play thief archetypes or the like frail wizards if they don't feel very um, competitive with the other classes and skills and, and fighting power. So you can kind mm -hmm. of, cut the or you could um split the difference a little bit by giving them their 5e style like uh balance but then also uh em embrace some character identity with some resources mm -hmm. right hmm. sounds cool yeah yep so when are we gonna see it greg when is the implementation uh, that's a lot of work. Um, <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, I, I don't know. I'd have to make a system for it, right? Like, I don't know. Do you have ideas for what could be the like other resources? I love the idea of a thief having like a bag of tricks and a and a like setup maneuver. But like, what does the fighter do? Like, what is his resource? Uh, if I were going to give resources to fighters, which I, I'm a little ambivalent toward, I actually really like the idea of fighters just being the rock that are just always... Just being a fighter? Their yeah, resources, they I, hit hard? <laughs> I've always liked the idea, like, even going into 5e, I think one of my favorite things is that they're just, they're always good to go. Um, yeah. I would even love if they had gotten rid of the short rest restrictions and, like, weakened their abilities there. But just, like, the fighter's always good to go. The fighter never needs to rest. The, fight, the fighter is a rock <laughs> who will continue to go at all times. Yeah. Um, but uh, if I were going to give them one, I would give them something from, like, an MMO and go with adrenaline, where they build adrenaline as they do things in combat, and then they can expend adrenaline to use, like, a beefed-up uh, skill. Ooh, that's cool. Yeah, I like that. MMOs might be a good place to farm inspiration from for something like that. To an extent. And to I an think extent. more so for like 5e, uh, yeah. it would work. Like 4e and 5e kind of standardize the combat system a lot more in a way that feels yeah. more uh, wrapped up in its game mechanics, I guess would be a good way to put it. And I feel like yeah, it's yeah. easier to build in those sorts of, those sorts of uh, expendable resources than in something like 2e where it's... <laughs> It's what it's whatever the writer was feeling for that particular day is how this, this particular <laughs> system works. Yeah, fair. Um, but for 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 thieves, uh, one thing that I have seen, uh, Hackmaster did luck points for thieves, where oh okay, um, basically thieves are luckier people. They can expend luck points in these various ways. Um, their luck only resets when they level up. So every thief has a limited amount of luck, effectively. Uh, eventually, your luck will run out <laughs> on a thief. But uh, as long as you, as long as you're careful about how you spend them, you can generally keep your luck going uh, by continuing to progress the character and leveling up. It's it's quite a neat system, and I would I would probably tie that into uh, a luck system if I were if I were to make that. It's it's a a thing where you don't get it back until you've made a major milestone by leveling up your character again. Hmm. But it's a thing that you can dig into in the meanwhile. Interesting. I like that. I guess what you really need to do is find out what the class archetype is, right? Like when you think of an archetypical rogue, are they a lucky scoundrel that gets by by the skin of their teeth and get luck mm -hmm. points? Or are they a calculating mastermind with a bag of tricks and a, and a penchant for clever ruses and, and traps? That's when fair. you look at a priest, right? Like, they're a holy man, yes, but what is the, the archetype of a priest and a fighter and a wizard so that you could cater abilities that that speak mm. to their archetypical, like, play style that you're going to have? That makes sense. I, uh... I guess I, I would need to... Oh, I'm sorry. 
Oh, I'm an opponent to the self-made man. I think anybody who's successful was lucky in getting there. <laughs> <laughs> I guess just more lucky than normal. How about yeah. that? <laughs> I don't know. I've, I've always played like rogues and bards, so I have like a very strong mm -hmm. idea of what their archetypes are like, but I would have to probably think really hard about like, what do what was a, what is a priest like? When I think of a priest, what is a priest? When I think I'm of in the, a... I'm in the opposite boat. I yeah. I, I would have to, to tap your knowledge for for rogues, but my, my <laughs> the one that I always play, I always make a fucking cleric every time I make a character. Yeah, <laughs> fair. That tracks. Both of those track actually. <laughs> Shockingly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Old, uh, yep. old hardcore heroes really revealing some tendencies. <laughs> I just play fighters and Ryan just plays wizards, so here we are. <laughs> <laughs> We're the perfect party. We just need a DM. <laughs> Faye, do you want a DM? Oh, let's get Nick to DM. Nick, It'd be Nick, so much fun. DM? Yeah. <laughs> that could be a fun Nick, show. Nick would just make awful encounters just to get back at you. <laughs> You all would be in along for the ride, though. It'd be great. I could yeah. leverage your lawyering against Nick. It would just be... <laughs> oh. oh, how the turntables. <laughs> I appreciate that that's become just a phrase at this point that people use. Yes, I do, I've too. Never, it's great. I've never heard that before, but I love it. Oh, it's from The Office. It's... Uh... It's, it's supposed to be a joke that he just he fucks it up and trails off like how the turntables. Mm. <laughs> but it's, it's just become a phrase at this point. It's great. Good, good. Well, uh, do you guys have any uh, cool tabletop stories or ideas? Or do you want to spend some time helping me hatch out my character <laughs> archetypes? Because um, this is really interesting. I would like to put it together, but... I want to hear your cool stuff. I've just been playing more RuneQuest, and like I've got my complaints with the system. I mean, with every every system I've ever played, there's always issues. Is that your like go to now? Like, it sounds like that's I'm been just, your no, your it's game. the same game. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you, you, you just it's still going. I love yeah. it. Um, I, I, I like I've got my complaints with it, but it has made me realize how much I prefer it when games don't have classes or levels. Um, Interesting. Specifically, the levels bit. Has, I, I think the the most the most revitalizing part about it is that I can like if I'm looking at making a warrior, like a, an enemy that the the party might fight on on like a, a combat field. Uh, I can just like gaze at them, be like, all right, they've got this much weapon skill, um, and then they're a person, so they have these stats roughly, and that gives them this many hit points. Everybody is just a guy, and it's really easy to just glance at somebody, and. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, have, no, I'm sorry. I, have, I have the Longhorn game on a little window over here to keep my eyes oh, on it. I, and I our tight end chat. just dropped a like sure touchdown and it hurt my soul a little bit. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I just <laughs> saw a, a sweet uh, true story from Faye. <laughs> hey, there's something oh. in the Super Cool Kids Club. Oh, I person. thought you were I thought you were laughing at my crazy faces. <laughs> we're laughing at <laughs> This ridiculous story about a guy trying to sneak a scimitar on a plane. <laughs> oh my god. I missed it. Where's Faye? It's right there. Oh, there it is. I I almost bought a scimitar recently, actually, but I just I don't I don't got the money to spend it on, on swords at this point. You don't have that that extra sword money? <laughs> is it aggressive <laughs> gift? <laughs> I just searched for chicken and that was the first thing that came up, and so oh I just went with it. <laughs> I know. It's very, it's far more aggressive than it's I would normally one. be, but you know. Um, going back to what I was saying. <laughs> uh, no, when 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 you do a game that doesn't have like levels in it specifically, like people are just people. Like even the party is pretty stacked at this point. They're all they're all quite experienced and have very very heavy skills. Everybody's still just got like regular person hit points because that's how request works as a game, and it means that oh. like combat is always quick because even these these turbo badasses can get get taken out instantly by an unlucky critical shot to the head. Yeah. Um and it it. It, it, it makes it a lot easier for me to build encounters, I guess is the nicest thing. Cause it's it's so much easier at a glance compared to games. Like in Dungeons and Dragons, I can see something does like 2d6 plus four damage. And that might be a lot or it might not be very much depending on how strong the party is at that point in time. 
Um, and in RuneQuest, I can go, okay, they have this much skill, um, and it's this weapon. Uh, or if it's like a giant monster, it's like, okay, this thing does uh, 3d10 damage. That will kill somebody instantly if it, if it hits them. Like, they will they will die if they get hit by this thing. Um, it's, it's, it's very nice, actually. Uh, at least from a prep perspective, it's it's very easy to put things together because it's so easy to just go like, yeah, this looks right. And then be more accurate compared to, to level-based games. How does, um, if there's no levels, how does progression work? Uh, when you succeed at using a skill, you uh -huh. tick it. And at the end of the adventure, uh, okay. you roll on every skill that you ticked. Um, and if you roll above your current skill, uh, it's a percentile-based skill. If you roll above your current skill level, it, it improves. So it's easier to improve it when it's lower, but it's harder to succeed with it. So there's it's like an interesting variation on Burning Wheel. I yeah, like yeah, you, you get better by doing good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, The nice thing there is that uh, you can only take a skill once in a season, so there's a lot more room to build like horizontally on a character as opposed mm. to just vertically. I actually really appreciate that. There's there's nothing that says you have to specialize in these three things. Once right. you get your spear skill for the season, you could just pull out a backup weapon and try and improve on that a little bit. There's like you you would want to use the spear because it's your best weapon, but like you could pull out that sword, which you're less good at. But if you get a tick on it, you might get better with it. And there's there's no real like progression hit that you take for doing so. And I, I appreciate that a lot. That's cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Greg, you yes. sense that you were watching a football game on the side when we were laughing at the the scimitar story. Who who's playing? Uh, the Texas Longhorns. And okay, you're the watching Iowa college State ball. Cyclones. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Never mind. I had a, I had an NFL question for you, which is wildly oh. off topic. Well, I'm happy to answer. I I probably can. Why are the Broncos playing 16, 15 teams once, but the Los Angeles Chargers twice? Why do they face the Chargers twice in a full season? Uh, they should be playing once? more than just the Chargers twice. They should be playing the Chiefs twice, the Chargers twice, and the Raiders twice. Oh, oh, you're right. Uh, I that was just is, dumb and not that counting That is their all them. division. So in the NFL schedule, you play the teams in your division twice. And then you will play, so that's eight. And then you will play a, another division that is randomly determined in advance. And then you will play four teams that finished in the same place in their division that you finished the season before. And that makes up mm. your 16 games. Mm. Now there's a 17th game, and I don't know how that one gets determined specifically yet, but that's the, that's the bulk of the 16-game schedule. Right. It's a 16, it's an 18 week schedule with 17 games. Yes. But six against the 16. So the 16 is what it used to be. Right. And so what you will do is you'll play your division twice. And there's usually four teams in your division, I think. Um, so that's eight. No, there's going to be three teams in your division. So that's six games. And then you'll play um, a collection of games against uh, a random division for three. And then you'll play a collection of games against uh, people who finished in your same uh, place. So if you were a third place finishing team last year, you'll play a selection of third place teams uh, from last year as well. From their uh, divisions, because each division is four teams, right? Yep. And so you you yeah, fight the yeah. other the other third place losers from the so it's sort of like um, um like a group like a it's a parody <laughs> initiative. Uh, the NFL really values that uh, teams that perform badly have a chance to perform well. They want teams to not be in the dumpster forever. Mm -hmm. um, they're not super successful at this, but they have had a fair amount of parody. So they want the best teams to play the best teams because that gives. Um, good tv ratings but it also has a chance of them losing more often mm -hmm. and they want the worst teams to play the worst teams um so that they come closer to the middle got it got it okay thank you thank you yeah that makes sense confused. from a presentation perspective but my my inner competitive spirit prefers the way baseball does it of just round robin everybody <laughs> Well, yeah. there's also 162 baseball games, and there's 17 <laughs> football games. So. Yeah, there's so <laughs> many baseball games. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, did you say 172? 162. I think it's 162, yeah, in a season. That's a game every other day. Yeah, there, there'll, there'll be, there'll be yeah. like a season of like uh, games where you just play every day of the week or most days of the week. 
What you There's... do is you have a series of games. So you'll play like a four game series. Mm -hmm. So like Monday through Thursday, you play four games. Yeah. Then, then you, you have, have a, a day or two off. Then you have um, a travel day or two yeah. days, and then you'll play another three or four game series. My yeah. God. Um, there's actually a theory about that, that one of the, the biggest struggles for the Mariners as a team is uh, the travel, because you, you have such short turnaround between series, and the Mariners live on the West Coast, and there's not that many baseball teams on the West Coast. So they have to travel all the way across the country for a lot of their, a lot of their series, and then travel all the way back to Seattle to play their, to play their home games. And when you, when you look at it, the Mariners have one of the best at home records in baseball, and they have a not very good away record in baseball. Mm. There's, there's a, and the there's travel time might that. be a factor in there. Yeah. Yeah. Cause if you're taking like five or six hour flights to get to the East Coast from the West Coast, but then there's also, you know, a couple hours on either end, everyone's tired all the time. Yeah. I can see that. That's a brutal schedule. Yeah. It's, it's rough. I mean, you know, they make a lot of money, so. <laughs> yeah, those baseball players earn that money too. Jesus, yeah. 162 games. Yeah, there's there's a lot of it. I mean, I I I appreciate it. I I I appreciate it because baseball is a great game to put on while I'm working. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so I just I just have baseball games going while I'm while I'm at work. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I, I some people say there's too many baseball games in a in a season. I'm I'm happy with it. I don't I don't really get the complaint. Okay, there's definitely too many baseball games, but you can still be happy <laughs> with it. <laughs> right, like just because there's too many doesn't mean you have to be like I want there to be fewer, but you can admit there are too many. <laughs> hey, well, here's here's the problem with saying there's too many though, is that we're all thinking of baseball as a sport, but really it's a it's a game for statistics nerds to compile numbers that has a bunch of, <laughs> a bunch of athletes hit a ball with a stick. Uh-huh. You're not wrong. You're that's, not wrong. That's right. That's real right. <laughs> and you need, you need that large sample size. Otherwise, There's a reason that Billy Bean is almost more famous than like actual baseball players. <laughs> I mean, shit, 538 got to start doing doing baseball statistics. It did. It? it did. Yeah. Which is weird. Because you're like, ooh, what's the latest polling data? It's baseball statistics? Is this a, <laughs> is this a serious website? I don't know. Well, you're you're talking about the 538, and no, it's not a serious website. <laughs> no, no, it's it, it's much better when it does baseball stuff, actually, than when it's doing uh, political. That's stuff. because he's a baseball guy. Yeah, <laughs> like they, he's they not did a, a legit thing. They they were analyzing like uh, the difference, like home run rates going up over time. Yeah, and they they investigated into that, and it turns out baseballs have actually changed over time. Mm. And they are they bounce off the bats better than they used to. They tried to deaden the baseball, and like that had disastrous results. So they went back to the same one a few mm -hmm. years back. There were there were arguments that the MLB was doing it secretly, but we're now leaning into you probably just can't make baseballs like you used to because climate change has made some of the resources that we that we used to make them less less good. Like well, and just manufacturing processes change, right? Yeah, the processes change, and also the materials you use aren't quite the same. So like yeah. the cores are a little bit bouncier now than they used to be. My grandma went on a tirade about flour being different the other day. She was like, I've been using this recipe. I've been doing this and that. And if the flour is not working and the flour is all wrong and I have to drive down into Salem to this one little bake shop to get the right flour. And I was like, oh, my God, I, <laughs> it's I, flour. It can't be that you know different. I, I believe her. I, I discovered that was the thing with chicken. <laughs> Yeah. Actually. <laughs> chicken is different. Uh, so chicken prior, God, I think it was like the 1940s was when the big switch happens, like 1948, I would guess off the top of my head. Yeah. Um, chicken used to be a much less common and much more expensive meat to get. Um, and then <clears throat> there was a big contest uh, with the goal being breed the most like easy, like the cheapest and the biggest chicken you can get. Right. Um, and now we feed chicken tasteless feed. Um, that is like basically the, the most efficient and cheap way to grow large chickens, but it means that chicken doesn't really taste like anything anymore. I mm. mean, um, it used to apparently be a very flavorful meat, and that's just that's just not. Well, I'll now. tell you what, I like my chicken. Yeah, no, mm. chicken's I'm great, but it's it's very much like the it's the it's nowadays it's the tabula rasa meats. You gotta you gotta season it to be whatever you want it to be. Mm. I eat a lot of chicken. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One of the emotes on my stream is literally a box of nugs. <laughs> oh, 
That sounds so good. It's right one now. of my favorite emotes because Matt like was so confused when I asked him for it. And then he <laughs> made like a perfect emote. And then the Wait. joke that it's based off of is at this point like seven years old. And no one who was watching me seven years ago still like is watching the stream. Wait. So it's just like the most inside joke ever. Give me the show show us the chicken nugget emote. I gotta oh, see. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll do, we'll do. This is my favorite emote on Twitch right now. <laughs> it's That's the best good. and it's such an inside joke that no one knows what it is <laughs> I, I think it's the like least used emote in like twitch history like if they took the stats on it the people that use it are like me that's it <laughs> where, where do you where do you get your where do you get your nuggets from greg where, where's your go-to nugget place um and why is it Jack I, in the box? okay so I have I have two answers for you. I have okay. I need nuggets and I need them fast, <laughs> right? Um, and <laughs> those those nuggets are going to be Wendy's. Uh, there's a Wendy's near nearish by, and they are like the spicy nuggets from Wendy's are just like a nice hot spicy delicious chicken thing that you can get for two bucks. Um, if I want like good chicken, it's Zaxby's. Okay, fair enough. I'm glad you didn't say McDonald's. No, no. I mean, I'll eat a okay. Look, I'll eat a McDonald's chicken McNugget, but oh, like, I will too. It's not but, my. Go but it, they're not. They're not that good. They're no, really I mean they're good. they're they're the they're the medium. They're the like they're the thing that everyone's compared to. Like you you must be sure. this tall to ride the ride. My uh, my go to is Jack in the Box, and I don't know why, but Jack in the Box nuggets, or or more usually their chicken strips is what I go for. Like that's that's the good shit for me right there. That's the that's the quality <laughs> garbage garbage chicken that you want. I'll tell you what though, Zaxby's that's some good shit. I mean, like they have fried chicken and they have great fried chicken, but they're like actual just like chicken nugget. Like they're like, they're not even nuggets. They're like strips, like chicken strips. Yeah. Like, oh god, that's I, the that's, good. That's stuff. my go to. Yeah, that's, yeah, Zaxby's I, is the better. Zaxby's is fantastic. I do the grocery store chicken nuggets. <laughs> That's it. I've, That's I've pretty much those. where I get them. Is like you Tyson's? Do, yeah. Like, would you just in the store, you're doing the grocery shopping, they've got like the deli section over there, and you just go and you're like, give me a pound oh, of tenders. Oh, you get you get the like the actually the, the, the deli ones. The deli, the deli chicken deli nuggets okay. are good. From the grocery they store. Used to be, yeah. There used to be a, a Hagen's nearby that had the best chicken strips, like from the deli. And mm -hmm. Hagen's did a boo boo, and they got <laughs> bought out by the wrong grocery chain. They got bought out by, um, I think it was, it's not Safeway. It's um, they got bought out by one of those those stores, Thriftway, I think. Mm -hmm. Thriftway, I think. Thriftway. Um, and there were too many of them in the like region around us here in the Portland metro area. Mm -hmm. And they like, they were too like um, close together. They were like Starbucks, but without the pull of Starbucks. And they ended up going like bankrupt because they just over expanded. And so mm. now all the Hagens are closed and I miss it. Mm. Albertsons? Albertsons. I thought Albertsons okay. got bought out by Safeway. They did. Okay. <laughs> Who was bought up by Kroger? Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's like three grocery stores in America, and they own everything. And they, yeah, they're all they're all buying each other. It's uh -huh. um, yeah. No. The Sometimes the frozen nuggets inside of the store, though, those can those can actually be pretty good if you get the right brand. There's a there's a brand in Costco that are absolutely fucking delicious, and I cannot for the life of me remember what the brand name is. You guys have a Costco, right? Uh, in uh, yeah. in Denver. Oh, in Denver. Uh, there's a Costco. No, the Costco just burned down in the fire. I don't know. There's a Costco oh somewhere around here. Yeah, there's a fire oh, no. in the area last year, and a whole town burned down, including like the entire Costco and the whole Target. And just, oh no! Gone. I'm pretty sure there's a Costco basically everywhere. Yeah, they're they're, they're everywhere, right? You can't not have yeah. a Costco. Okay, I I am pretty sure this is the brand name. Um, they are called Just Bear Chicken Nuggets. <laughs> They're called Just Bear because they're lightly breaded. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, okay. 
They are delicious. Really? I am a big fan of these. Of of the frozen come in a bag chicken nuggets. Yup. All right. I haven't gotten frozen come in the bag chicken nuggets in a long time because for me, I always get them when I'm like doing the weekly grocery shopping and then you're like, but I'm kind of hungry now. Ooh, chicken nuggets. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I'm almost certain that this is the brand name. It's Just Bear Chicken Nuggets. Well, I do see Just Bear Chicken Nuggets on the internet and I do see frozen (laughs) chicken nuggets from them and side-by-side comparisons to Chick-fil-A. Yeah, no, they look like Chick-fil-A nuggets and they taste good. I mean, these are good nuggets. How different can chicken nuggets look from one another? <laughs> Chick-fil-A nuggets are unique in their shape, I think. They actually look like little misformed nuggets of gold almost instead mm-hmm. of like flat, I get weird what you mean. Oh, yes. Instead of like the they, full they look like... tender that's like the breast that's been, it's just like chopped up little bits that they- Yeah, put. it's chopped into like almost cubes. So they look like- like they look like little little rocks, basically. Little rocks, yeah. Um, doesn't doesn't KFC do that too? I haven't gotten chicken nuggets from KFC. I, when I, I go I to, KFC, to KFC, I get in like probably fifteen years. So it, 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 I don't go to KFC very often, and when I go to KFC, I'm there for like the full fried chicken. Like I want a fried chicken thigh or something. Oh yeah. Now I just want like chicken. Guys, tenders. I'm hungry. I'm so yeah. I haven't had breakfast I'm, yet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a jack in the box in a bit. How far is Zaxby's? Well, it's about time to bring this in for landing, and I'm kind of hungry now, so. Guys, we have ended chit chat so that we can eat. <laughs> I think it's time to go find some chicken nuggets. Yeah. I think we, we had a loving discussion about chicken nuggets, and uh, really, really, we were all just hungry. Yeah. 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 That's it. Cool. Well, thanks for coming out and doing this, you guys. I say coming out like you had to go somewhere, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for thanks for hosting. It's been too long since we all sat down and chatted. Uh, yeah, it's been a bit. Good it's time. been about a year. Oh my god, has it really been a year? Somewhere last October or November was the last time we all got together. Oh yeah, man, been, that is far too while. long. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a hot yeah. minute. Neil, I will, I will have to play some Dota with you. I'll, I'll kick my Guild Wars 2 addiction long enough to, to do some Dota with you. I'll play, yeah, we'll, we can play some Dota. And if Greg, if you want to, if you delve in, I don't know if I can, <laughs> I don't know if I can train you because I'm not very good and I only know three heroes and you can't play them because I play them. Um, That's okay. But... You know what? If you're willing to just run into bushes randomly with me and yell and try to kill things, then we can do that. Uh, I don't know if that happens in Dota, but I'm down. Oh. <laughs> that no was bushes. my favorite part of us playing HOTS together. Is yeah. like, you were like, here, come, just follow me, Greg, just follow me. And we just ran into the bushes every, <laughs> like, three seconds, like, trying to find somebody to fight. And we died and died and died. HOTS was fun some, that way. Somebody was, was so short-lived. mad at us. Yeah. Who was mad at us that day? I don't remember, but they were so mad. I'll, I'll see if Faye could keep her blood pressure down from having to play with the three of us together. Oh, she is, no. She's probably the best player among us so. oh she did she uh, i don't know what how good least, you are sean but she's definitely the better than me and neil by like a wide margin in dota uh, technically she... i'm higher ranked than she is in uh, uh in ranked <laughs> because i just did my placement matches and it placed me way too high and i haven't come back <laughs> so i think faye would would just straight up clothesline you if you tried to say this to her in person <laughs> 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 yeah i think it's i don't even know the name of it Crusader 2 or something? Crusader 1? It's pretty good. It's not bad. <laughs> Is it, hold on. Wait, hold on. I need to look this up. Really I think fast. it's, I don't know. Fact check this. Two this is when we learn that's actually just like, <laughs> it's like bronze the worst one. two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like okay, it's silver. At this, it's the highest in the silver rank because it goes. This looks here. like I was gonna say this looks like low silver to me based on the. Uh, the, 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 no, the no, 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 because it goes here. Herald, Guardian, Crusader. It's the third one. Archon, yeah, Legend, Archon. Ancient, Divine. So it's the third of seven ranks, and I'm at the top Four. of it. Oh, okay. no, higher rank is better. More stars is better. So yes, and Crusader, also, oh, fuck. Uh, here's the other, the other bit to note. So if you're in, for example, Crusader, 
Yeah. Uh, oh, you know what? Actually, it's got a fairly. So it starts at about fifteen forty mm -hmm. um, for Elo, whereas your your highest ones, your immortals, are going to. Can, or okay. It doesn't start until the mid fifty five hundreds. So it's. I'm not gonna uh, let you guys run off of the stream here before you like <laughs> define for me Elo, because it's a thing oh. I hear all the fucking time okay. and I don't understand. Okay, what so it, Elo, like, describe Elo to me so Elo that I understand. Elo was created as a, I believe it was made for chess. It was specifically made for chess or it, or it was like something made for something else and then became widely popularized because it was applied to chess. Um, but it is essentially a way of measuring skill between different players. And the way that it works in chess is like, I'm, let's say I'm 1500 ELO, and I play against somebody who's 1600 ELO in chess. Uh, we play a match. If I beat them and I'm 1500 ELO, I get a bunch of points because they, they are the favored victor of that match since they are 100 ahead of me. So I get a bunch of points, they would lose a bunch. Um, if, if it goes the other way around, they would gain fewer because they were already predicted to win. Um, the system is designed to fairly evenly cause points to go up and down. Um, and create sort of a diaspora of skill that keeps people um, inside of a general point range by playing against people who are, who are close and either gaining more or gaining less depending on who is favored by the ELO system. Um, and it's, it's a pretty good indicator of skill in solo games. It's a little bit more of a shit show in team games like Dota. <laughs> <laughs> where, where you can play well and outperform the enemy team and still lose, or you could not outperform the enemy team and still win um, because you mm -hmm. can be you can be carried or let down by your team. Uh -huh. um, ELO, MMR, same, same, yeah? Yeah, the, it's the same concept. Okay. Um, and then I believe the only way that ELO inflates is when you add new players to the system. So like chess now has, I think, a, a higher like top end ELO than it used to. That's mostly because there's there's a lot more players. Than there yeah, yes. Yeah. Starcraft ELO has always been going up. Well, Starcraft 1 ELO was always going up because I think the system is inherently increasing ELO over time. And so it's not useful for like absolute comparisons, only like yes. relative comparisons. So if you, you know, if I have an it's ELO 1500 now, players. but yeah. you know, 10 years ago, the highest player's ELO was 1200. That doesn't mean I'm better than the 1200 player. Cause it's yeah. contemporary. It's, it's similar to like baseball where you can compare modern pitchers against each other, but comparing to past pitchers is a weird thing because yeah. the game plays differently now than it did back in like the 1960s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's Elo, and All right. I'm gonna go get some chicken nuggets. <laughs> so I'm hungry. Uh, me too. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely gonna go get some chicken. <laughs> All right, friends. Uh, let's do this again soon. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. Cool. Yeah. All right, everybody. Good night. Goodbye. Good morning. Good afternoon. Have a good one. Yeah. Whatever it is for you, have a good one. Yeah. Bye bye.